Welcome to Stormwater Drainage Solutions. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to build a dry well with a backup sump pump system incorporated into it. So we're gonna start by digging our hole four feet deep, and then we're gonna be lining this hole with a good non-woven geotextile fabric. This is very important. You wanna make sure that you get the correct fabric. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you buy a landscaping fabric, that fabric is not gonna allow water to pass through it like a non-woven geotextile drainage fabric will. So it's very important to get the right fabric. Now, with this video, I'm not really gonna be showing you the pipe work that we did on the gutter downspouts. There are two downspouts that are gonna be feeding into this dry well here. And this video is gonna mainly focus on the dry well and the sump pump discharge for it but we did use triple wall HDPE for the two downspouts because this was a budget friendly system. We had to work with our client's budget. So we opted for the triple wall because that was the cheaper option. And as you can see here, these are the two downspouts that are gonna be piped into it. Now with triple wall HDPE, we do have a couple of videos on that and I'll go ahead and I'll link those in the description below. Now, typically we use a Zoller M53 or M98 sump pump. These are probably some of the best sump pumps for yard drainage on the market. But in this case, we're using a sump pump that was supplied by our client. Now, remember, like I stated earlier, this was a budget friendly install. Now, I am setting up my one-way check valve to go onto my sump pump. This is very important. You do not want to skimp out on a one-way check valve. What this does is it ensures that water cannot backfeed down your sump pump discharge line back into your pit and continue cycling your pump over and over and over again. Because what this will do is it will burn the pump out and it will decrease the lifespan of the pump. So you wanna make sure that you put a one-way check valve on your discharge end. This is very important. And another thing that's important, do not bury this check valve in the ground. Make sure that it is in the sump pit with the pump. That way it's serviceable. Because if you bury it in the ground, if it ever needs to be serviced, you have to dig it up to find it. And another thing, you do not want to put your one-way check valve on its side. You want to make sure that it's upright. That way that flap can work correctly and not get stuck in one position or the other, either closed or an open position. If it's on its side, it is more likely that the flap could get stuck. What I'm trying to show the camera here is there's some arrows that indicate the direction of water flow on this one-way check valve. That is also a very important thing. Do not put your check valve upside down because then that is just gonna block the flow of water because the flap can only open one way. So that is another very important factor. Now, I don't have it on film here because I did it off film, but the other important thing whenever you're installing a sump pump is make sure you drill a small hole, a weep hole in the PVC riser pipe that goes from your male nipple to your check valve. You want this hole in between. That way it prevents your pump from getting air locked. Incorporating a sump pump into a dry well, make sure that that sump pump is sitting on a flat, solid surface down in your well. You do not want your pump sitting on the base of stone that is going to be poured in this well. That is why we put these cinder blocks at the bottom. One flat so the pump could sit on it, and then the other two on either side of the dry well insert to support the insert and give it a stable bottom. Now we're gonna go ahead and tie in our sump pump discharge line into this existing Schedule 40 main line. This Schedule 40 main line runs from the backyard to the front yard and it has gutter downspouts tapped into it. Now we're gonna to have to pull some of these pavers to go ahead and splice in our sump pump discharge line into this main line. Whenever you are tying in a lateral to a main line, make sure you use a Y fitting. This is very important. This allows water to make a smooth transition into the main line instead of slamming to a stop opposed to using a T fitting. Whenever you use a T fitting, water has to slam to a stop and then start its flow back up again down the main line. So always use a Y fitting. 
Whenever you are splicing in an additional lateral to an already existing system, especially when it's PVC, there's a certain order you're going to want to do things to make it easier on yourself. The very first thing you're going to do is you're going to have enough room on the existing line, dig the dirt out, and put a no-hub rubber cup link over that first piece of pipe. Then you are going to level out and glue your Y connection in to the angle and direction that you need it. You are going to have a stub glued into that Y already to accept the no hub rubber boot. Once all this is glued in and angled correctly, you are going to slide that rubber boot, also known as a no hub fitting or a fern co, over that stub out on the Y to close in this gap. Then tighten down the hose clamps that are on that rubber boot. Now that we have our sump pump discharge line spliced in to the existing main line, we're going to go ahead and start to bury this system up and get our drain stone placed in around our dry well insert and at the bottom of our pit. Now, as you can see, no matter what kind of environment we work in, we always put our dirt on tarps. It makes cleaning up that much simpler and a lot more effective. Every job that we work in, we always strive to be as non-invasive as possible. I mean, I want to be surgical when I'm doing these jobs because I have always been taught that the less mess that you make while working, the easier the finish becomes. And in other words is you also clean as you go. That way you are more efficient on your job site and things just come out a lot better at the end of the job. The stone that we use around our dry well is one to one and a half inch crushed granite. The reason why we use a larger aggregate is to create larger voids. This allows for better water movement and in the dry season it allows for air to pass through this system. It is important whenever you're designing a dry well or a French drain system in the dry season you want air to be able to move through that system. This air prunes roots that get into the system off. That way you do not have root growth throughout your system. If a system that is built with any type of aggregate holds water in that aggregate because it's too small, roots will find their way in there and they will grow and thrive in there because of the moisture. If you get rid of that moisture in the dry season, these roots will dry up and they will essentially fall off. Now, another thing you might have noticed is this dry well is a little close to a structure, but we're not worried about that because we have a backup sump pump in here. Once this dry well starts to become too filled with water, that sump pump is going to kick on and it's going to evacuate that water out. We did not have a lot of working space back here. We had a fence on one side. We had an additional structure on the other that we're draining the two gutter downspouts off of. And then the house is a little bit further up. There's not a lot of room in this backyard. There's also a giant oak tree that was directly behind us. So we do not want to put the dry well close to that because then we would really have a lot of root intrusion. So every environment is going to be different. Every exterior yard drainage system is going to be unique and no two systems are going to ever be built the same. We went ahead and topped off around the top of the dry well with pea stone to give it a base layer because in the near future, this is going to have pavers all around it. There's going to be an entire paver patio around this. And the only thing that's going to be exposed is the lid to this dry well because you want to always have access to a dry well or a sump pump basin. That way, if the sump pump needs to be maintenance or if the dry well needs to be inspected, it's easy to do that. So you always want to have a good access point. Now, we service the Hillsboro, Pasco, and Pinellas counties of Florida, and if you're looking to have a drainage system for your yard installed, give us a call. We can come out there and assess the situation and help design a system that fits your needs. And until next time, this is SWDS signing off.